So today's training is how to rebuttal the blow off. And when I talk about the blow off, what I'm really talking about is that I'm busy, call me back. You call them, I'm at work, will you call me back? I'm at lunch, will you call me back? I'm watching television, will you call me back? That's a blow off. So we're gonna walk through that and I'm gonna go ahead and put into the chat, let me open up my chat window. I'm gonna open up my chat window and I am going to drag and drop in the script that we're going to be, be going over. So open this up, it's in a PDF format. So go ahead and open this up on your computer because this is what we're going to be over. You don't need to, to actually use this right now, but you're going to want to use this for your role playing when you go at nine o'clock. Uh, and what you'll find, I do my scripts quite a bit different. I, I write out scripts so that the agent says something and the prospect says something. Just like a movie or just like a real, real script, that enables you to focus on your level of training uh, focus on the task at hand. This way you don't, you know, you don't get these random weird things. And you know, there's a lot of times when somebody's prospecting uh, or excuse me, not prospecting, but role playing and you as the agent says something and then they're at a loss for words. So a script helps you do that. So let's go off uh, on, on some fundamentals. So what is a blow off objection? A blow off objection is a type of a reflex no that a prospect will use once their salesperson alert goes off. Now let's pause here for a second and let's really talk about this. A reflex no is one of those things that you just say no. It's like walking into a clothing store. You're gonna go in there and buy a pair of jeans. The rep comes up to you and says, hey, can I help you with something? You're like, no, I'm just looking. That's a reflex no. Now here's the thing with being a modern real estate in the 21st century is that the consumer is bombarded with marketing messages, with sales messages. You know it and I know it. We get bombarded with sales conversations and, and pitches all the time. And we all have a salesperson radar. And when that salesperson radar goes on, what typically happens is a wall comes up and now you need to step away and you're just trying to get away from it. Well, the reason why the salesperson's alert goes up is because most salespeople are trying to commu force communicate in a language pattern that's different than what normal communication patterns, normal communication patterns that, that salespeople, or not salespeople, but we have. Think about it, the conversation that you have with a buyer and seller, is it the same type of a conversation that you're having with a friend, a family member, a coworker? It probably isn't. And the reason why is because a lot of different sales trainers, speakers, and coaches like myself, what they're doing is they're going off of language patterns that started out, you know, if you guys ever seen the movie, um, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, or Boiler Room, okay, those are old traditional sales tactics. Now, don't get me wrong, I came up prospecting, I'm a big fan of it, I don't hard sell. I base everything I do in, in conversational selling, and it's tied into the language patterns that, uh, that uh, people are using the here and now. So let's go back to here. So that's what a reflex no is. A reflex no is something that once that salesperson alert goes off, all of a sudden they're like, whoa, I'm busy. They could be eating potato chips watching a commercial and they're still busy because they don't know who you are. Number two, I'm gonna share with you guys a concept of what a micro commitment is. We're gonna use this, it's in the script. And a micro commitment is a small commitment to get a prospect to inquire about the reason for the commitment. Now, I'm gonna go more into this when we go into the script, but this is something that works like a charm. It works, you know, one way or the other, it works 100% of the time, and if there's anything that you take out of this, this little micro training, then take this micro commitment, use it. Don't just use it on prospects, use it on agents, use it on your family, Use it on your friends. I promise you it will work. And I'll, and I'll explain more in detail. Now, before I dive into the script, I want you to know something. And you've, if you've been in my trainings, if you watched any of my videos, I've probably said this because I, I, I repeat a lot of the same fundamentals all the time. There are only two questions that you have to answer before you can have any meaningful conversation with anyone. Just two. If you don't answer these questions to the consumer, 
Now I'm assuming that you're calling someone and they don't know who you are. It's a cold call. If they don't know who you are, there are two, two questions that they have in their head that everybody has that you have when somebody calls you. Doesn't matter if you know them, like them, or trust them. If you don't answer these two questions, you're not going to have that conversation get anywhere. And we're going to go over those as well. So let's talk about the anatomy of, the, of a prospecting call. So the prospecting call, here are the two questions. Who are you? What do you want? And what are you offering? So think about when somebody calls you. Think about when an unidentified number calls you. The first question that comes up, and it comes up with me, it comes up with you, is who's calling me? Who's calling me? Now we have caller ID. If you're like me, you have a smart, a supercomputer in your pocket, and every single phone number that, that, that you know, that knows, that could possibly know you, is in this. I went and got tires uh, a few weeks ago, and I had to drop off my car, and I had to put the phone number of America's Tires in my phone so I didn't send them a voicemail. So who are you? Now when caller ID comes up and a random com number comes up, the next question you have is what do they want? What's the purpose of their call? And then after you get that, now it's what are they offering? So if you look at this graph, a cold call, they don't know who you are, they don't know what you want, and because of that, they don't know what you're offering. They don't, they don't know if they need or want what, they're, what you're offering. That's a cold call. Now a warm call is somebody, they do know who you are, they do know what you want, they just don't know, and you don't know either, if what you have or what service or what product you're selling is something that they want or is it something that they need. And then the hot call is they know who you are, they know what you want, and they do need what you're offering. These are people who, are, who have sold their home, maybe they expired for sale by owner. You know that they need help selling their home and a product service that you offer. So that's what it is. So this is a good graph for you to really identify. My goal for me and for the people who I train and coach, I don't want you to be in the cold call side. I want you to be at least in the warm call side. Could you imagine how great prospecting would be? if all you did was call people who knew you and knew what you want? Well, you can do that through technology. That's a different training, but if you guys follow me, uh, if you follow my YouTube channel, if you jump onto these trainings, I'm gonna have future trainings coming up for this group alone, but uh, if you follow, you're gonna learn these different techniques on how to use modern platforms to make it so things are warm. So here's the, here's the script. Every script that I do has three elements to it. What is the source? The source here is the, you know, you're not going to be talking to a sphere of influence the same way you're going to talk to expireds or for sale by owners. So you have to have the source built into it. So this source, and, and this is following along in your scripts. If you don't have your script, then it's in the chat. Um, if you got here late, let me go ahead and put that back into the window. Download the script so you can actually can follow along. You're going to use this for your role playing after this call. So an old expired or withdrawn two years ago. Now, why did I choose this? I chose this because we are just barely coming, it, the pandemic is barely thawing out. COVID is still an issue, but it's not an issue. We, we got shut down March of 2020. So what, I'm, what this script is all about are the people who expired or withdrew in 2020, either right there at the beginning of the pandemic, say January, February, and March, or into the pandemic. So March, April, May, June, July, you know, the rest of 2020. Look, there's gold in them hills. There are people out there who were planning on selling their home during co when, when, we got, when we all got grounded to our house. And for whatever reason, they have not come onto the market. Their motivation still may be there. They still may want to sell, but like many others, they may be waiting for the market. They may be waiting to see what's going on. And if you guys followed the if, if you haven't uh, learned how to rebuttal, um, there's, you don't want to sell my home because there's nothing to buy, then go to my YouTube channel, look that up, because you know a lot, of, a lot of times when you rebuttal an objection, all it does is get you another objection. But what you're doing is you're working your way through the objections. That's what sales is. You know, somebody has a question, somebody has an objection, you just have to feel them. Very rarely will you have just nobody, in fact, I can't think of a time where this happened to me, where nobody had a question, nobody had an objection. 
they, they're going to have them. Now, the, the type of call, the type of call is going to be cold. Cold meaning they don't know who you are, they don't know what you want, they don't know, know if they need or want what you're selling, which is your services. And then, of course, the objection is, I'm busy, will you call me back? So here's the objection. So the agent is going to go ring, ring. Prospect goes, hello. Now, you can see here that I have, I, I went through and I did some, some mock-ups to this. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go, hi, John. Hi, Jane. I'm doing what's called an assumptive opening. Now, again, think about when you spoke with a friend, a family member, someone who you know, someone in your SOI, someone who knows you, likes you, trusts you, and you know them, like them, and trust them. You typically don't go and you call and ring and say, hello, may I speak with Brett? No, that's not a friend. What you do is you're like, hi, John. Hi, Brett. And there's only a, a, a few different options that somebody could respond to. They're either going to go, who's this? They're going to go, yes. Or they're going to say, um, who? Who means you have the wrong number. If they say, yes, it's them. If they say, um, well, who's this? And then you know it's, it's probably them as well because people also screen their own calls. You guys probably have done it. I know I've done it. Uh, but you guys have probably also screened your calls. So the prospect goes, yes, who's this? You go, hi, John, this is Brett with XYZ Real Estate. How are you? Now, how are you is not a throwaway question. Anyone who tells you different is they have no understanding of how communication goes, uh, behavior, how the behavior process is with communication. If you're that person that believes it's a how are you, then think about the way that you talk to your friends, family, and coworkers. Do you not, when you see somebody or when you talk to somebody, is it not just part of your greeting to say, how are you? Now, you may not care how they really are, or you may care how they are, but it's something that happens. It's based in our consumer behavior. It's based in our behavior patterns. And for you not to say, how are you, it eliminates them from the conversation. It throws up the, you know, it, it goes against the modern com the behavior process, the modern the way that people communicate, and what it does, it makes them feel uneasy, and so all of a sudden the sales alert goes up, and now now you've just lost. So you're going to say, "How are you?" And, and and in this, I'm good, but I'm really busy at the moment. Can I can you call me back later? Here's the thing. Let's think about this. So you called, you did an, an assumptive opening. Hi, John. This is. Brett with XYZ Realty, how are you? Um, so they know who you are. They know the company you're with. Look, they can add. They, they, two plus two equals four no matter what, where you're at, no matter what planet you're on. If they don't know who you are and you're calling them out of the blue and you're identifying yourself as a real estate sales professional, they, they know it's going to be some sort of a sales call. It is. Let's be honest. Let's own it. It's fine. Now, you're going to say, Notice here I have pause. Now, sales is one part theatrics. How you say things, the words that you say, 100% matter. And if you don't believe me, go watch uh, one of those no-name movies on Netflix. You know, those B, C movies. Uh, and go watch a, a you know, Avengers Endgame and look at the acting. The way that they deliver a script. One of one sounds very natural and normal and has a lot of emotion into it and has a lot of voice fluctuation to it. The other one's very monotone, like they're reading because they probably are reading. We want to make sure that we implement these theatrics, especially when we're on the phone. It's not so important when you have all your senses working with you when you're face to face, but when you're on the phone, when you're on FaceTime, FaceTime's better than phone, but you need to make sure that you're implementing those various different nuances. So you're going you're gonna to have a pause here. You're going to go, oh, like you're surprised. Oh, look, I'm really sorry that I caught you at a bad time. Okay, you're apologizing. You caught them at a bad time. Look, you interrupted their day. Apologize for it. It's fine. Is it possible? This is where the micro commitment comes in. This works like a charm. Is it possible for me to schedule a time to speak with you for just two or three minutes later today? Would that be okay? Notice how I started with a question. I ended with a question. And then notice that the micro commitment, the micro being it's a small commitment. 
I'm only asking for two or three minutes of their time, but it's a commitment that I'm asking them for. So I'm going to come to them. Is it possible for me to schedule a time to speak with you for just two or three minutes later today? Would that be okay? Now, here's the thing. If they're really busy, they're going to say, yeah, that's fine. If they're really, really busy, if they answer their phone and they thought that maybe you were, you know, you were, that, that, it was that, that seller that you were waiting to call back and it just happens to have the same area code, then, then they would, and they're really busy. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. But if they're not, if they're, if they're on the couch watching a commercial eating potato chips, remember, whatever they're doing, it's, they're, it's, it's more important than somebody who just called them randomly on the phone. People make time for things that are important to them. So what's happening, and, and accept it to be truth, it's, it's nothing wrong, it's fine, you do it, I do it, is when you don't know somebody, you don't know what they want, and the sales alert comes up, there is nothing out there that's, that's less important than, than having that conversation with them. So what you want to do is you want to tie them down to a micro-commitment. Now here's, here's the psychology uh, on the behavior of the consumer. If you ask them to commit for something, they're going to ask you what it's about. They're going to ask you what it's about. No one's just going to give you two or three minutes. So, so here's the thing. Would it be possible for me to schedule a time to speak with you for just two or three minutes later today? It's going to be really quick. Would that be okay? You're going to hear a pause on their side 90% of the time. And they can say, well, what's this about? Now here's where, why it's magic. Because now you just got your two or three minutes. You just got it. Them saying, because you offered, because you said, hey, perfect, can I schedule a time to meet with you for two or three minutes later today? Is, would that be okay with you? And then they're going to say, well, what is this about? Now you have your two or three minutes. That's why this works as a charm. You're not taking a big deep breath like a lot of sales trainers teach you to do and just vomit words onto people. You're actually engaging in a conversation. My definition of a conversation is that you say something they say something, you say something, they say something, okay? And you've got permission to them. They asked you a question. You wanna know how you're controlling the conversation? Your question gets them to ask you a question about the question. Now your response. Well, the reason I'm calling is that my notes show that you are the owner of the property over at 123 Main Street, is that correct? Now look. Why would you not want to have a conversation about an expired listing until you can clearly identify that the person you're talking to is a decision maker? That's where a lot of mistakes happen. You could burn a lot of your time by talking to someone who's not the decision maker. So, the reason I'm calling is because my notes show that you're the owner of the property over at 123 Main Street. Is that, is that correct? And they're going to say yes. Why? Well, I noticed that you were selling it, selling your property. Notice how, I'm, how I changed the words from home to property. I want to I wanna disassociate the, the feeling of a home. A home is where you raise your family and turn it into something general as an asset into a property. Well, I noticed that you were selling your property a few years ago and you took it off the market. And I was just curious, have you ever given any thought about just selling your property again? Open-ended question. Well, it's not an open-ended question. It's going to be a yes or no. In this, they say no. We've decided to just keep the property. Now, I, and because I, there's a fundamental that you want to repeat what people say. There's a fundamental on uh, repeating what they had just said. I didn't put it into the script because that's a fundamental. You should be doing that anyways. So now, now notice how I put in here puzzled. So you're going to go, oh, oh, I see. So you're, you, you've decided just to keep the property. Oh, okay. And, and the tonality in your voice is going to come off like you're, you're puzzled. Like, why would you do that? Oh, I see. Okay, well, well, look, while I have you on the phone, that's called a softener. Let me ask you this. While I have you on the phone, let me ask you this. Okay, now they may have an issue with you asking it because you just said that while I have you on the phone and you gave them a reason to ask them another question, subconsciously, it's fine. So while I have you on the phone, let me ask you this. If you could sell your property for significantly more money than you could have ever thought of selling it two years ago, would that change anything for you? Now, I put an end of the script here. Why would I end right there? Because this script can go on for days. Because what will happen here is that you're opening up the, the possibility of different objections, of more objections. And we're only focusing on this one objection. So when you're practicing this with your partner, this is where the end of the script is. But I also want to go into another part here. There are, 
there are a few reasons why you're, you should be prospecting. Nobody should be prospecting for the sake of prospecting. Okay, you shouldn't be co prospecting for contact. You should be prospecting because you're hunting, you're searching. Same thing with lead follow-up. But there's two reasons, main two reasons why you're actually putting in the time and effort to prospect. Number one is to find now business. It's to find now business. Number two, it's to grow your database for future business, period. That's it. 80% of your time as a professional salesperson, notice how I didn't say real estate sales professional. As a professional salesperson, 80% of your time needs to be uh, finding now business and finding future now business. Business that might be two, three, four, five, six years ago. Now, some sales trainers say that you shouldn't keep leads longer than three months. I disagree with that. I think everybody should have a digital platform, a CRM, that it doesn't matter. You put it on autopilot. These are, you should be focusing on, peop, on, on having conversations with people who own property that live in your market area. That's it. And building a database of that and, and, and spreading valuable content. That's a whole different training, but I think where you're getting with me. It doesn't matter if they're planning on selling in three months or three years from now. If you put them in a database and you have an auto campaign set up and you're staying in front of them, providing them with valuable local information, then that is the future now business. That's growing your database. Look, survey, survey, survey after survey after survey, interview after interview after interview with top agents, where they make their long, the reason why they crush it is because they've taken 10, 20, 30, 40 years to grow a database and they're very popular to that database. They're the go-to person for real estate in that database. So that's why, I, that's why I say if they own a home and they live in your market area, that should go in your database. So let's go back to here. So here's the thing. Everybody... If you don't have this, do this this week. You need to have a monthly deliverable. You need to have a monthly deliverable. Monthly deliverable could be by mail. It, that's expensive, depending on how the size of your database. But it could also be by email. Right now, pros and cons to both. Email, everything gets congested. Everybody's emailing everything to everybody. Um, mail, there's a cost associated with it. Either one's fine. Do both. If you can, if it's within your budget and time, do both. So we want to make sure that before you end the call, remember, this is somebody that owns a home that lives in your market area. We're just trying to find out if they want to sell it. If, if at the end you're like, and they don't want to sell it, but they own a home, they live in your market area, say, okay, perfect. Well, look, just one last thing before I let you go. Again, that's a softener. You gave them a reason why you're going to ask another question. I specialize in the XYZ area. And each month I, I publish, I provide a home valuation update uh, to, all the, to any property owner who would like to receive it. Think of this as a monthly investment statement that tracks the value of your property. Now I'd be happy to send, I'd, I'd be happy to send this out to you monthly and, and, uh, and, and get this the most recent copy. Would you be interested in receiving it? Now you're asking them for permission. Now think about this. For those of you that are in the stock market, Sorry, I mean, it's, it's really just getting pounded. But for any of you that have any investments, for any of us that have a bank account, which is everybody, you get a monthly statement. You get a monthly statement that shows you the value of your assets. Could be your bank account, could be your savings account, could be your investment account, whatever it may be. Why is it that, do you think that a homeowner would like to have a monthly value assessment of knowing exactly what's going on each and every month on their largest asset, probably in their portfolio? Probably, yeah, maybe they won't. Maybe they already have that service. But if you don't ask them, you're not growing it. So you, by you asking that, you're going to, the next question is, they're gonna say, yeah, absolutely. Okay, may I have your email address and I'll send you the most recent one today, okay? So, you now have all their data points. Number one, you know their name. Number two, you know their address. Number three, you know their phone number because you talked to them, and now you have their email address. You have the four primary data points to allow you to continue providing service, showcasing how awesome you are as a local real estate expert. And you know this, this conversation could have turned into, um, yeah, I am looking at selling it. What do you do to sell homes? 
That's why I stopped the script because now we're going to other objections. Okay, so that's what I got for today. We are at 8.58. I do have a minute or so uh, if any of you would like to ask any questions.